What is going on guys, Vlad here with solosplc.com and in today's video we're going to continue on and explore some of the different compare instructions and the instruction that we're going to talk about today is going to be the limit instruction which is going to be testing a single integer or float against two other different values and let's jump right into the uh, instruction on the first rung I have this system integer zero which is compared against two different values and essentially the limit instruction encompasses both the greater than and the less than uh, comparisons into a single instruction which makes it a bit more flexible and easier to use and visualize so what this does is essentially is set two different limits so you have the low limit as indicated here as well as a high limit indicated here and if this uh, value falls between those two numbers then the instruction evaluates to uh, true so let's look at it here and actually I've mistyped this boolean a couple more times than it needed to so let's correct that right now so this is going to be our boolean 5 do remember that you should never use the same boolean boolean within an OT instruction more than one time in your program um, however let's get back to this limit instruction so let's look at back at the initial value which was zero for this integer zero which is the test variable and zero is definitely outside of the low and high limit of 34 and 78 as soon as this becomes closer so let's make this for example 33 and 33 is of course still outside of the limits and then 35 and even let's see 34 so 34 is also within the limit so it's equal to this lower limit and of course going up to 35 uh, 40 so on 47 and then until it reaches this 78 so 78 78 is still within the limit and then as soon as we hit this 79 we are no longer within the limit therefore this boolean de-energizes just like we would expect let's look at the next instruction so what happens is uh, often you get the question uh, what if I flip these numbers what if my lower limit is actually higher than my um, than my high limit so what happens is uh, I guess maybe you you would expect it maybe not but it's very interesting and essentially the logic flips so now your low limit is uh, greater than your high limit therefore it essentially flip flops the outcome so this let's look at the um, number which would lie between those two values let's say 500 for example so do remember if this was within those values but the low limit was less than the high limit then this would evaluate the true however this is exactly the opposite if the test value is within the low and high limit but the low limit is higher than the high limit then the logic is essentially evaluating to false therefore this boolean is not energized however if it is outside of that limit so let's say for example 3000 then sorry 3000 then the logic would evaluate the true and this is going to be the same if you have a very large number anywhere outside of those bounds so once again if you have a low limit which is less than the high limit then you only have that range between the two of them in order to evaluate the true but if you have uh, a low limit which is greater than your high limit then you have the range outside of those two boundaries to evaluate to true let's look at a yet another timer application so I do love to demonstrate um, a lot of these instructions through timers because they essentially make it really easy to uh, set up some kind of a variable of value without actually having an analog sensor on hand so once again I have this system timer zero which is continuously running from zero to 20 seconds or to 20,000 milliseconds and what I have here is a uh, large rung than maybe what you've used to seeing in my videos but essentially you have four different conditions and each one represents a section of your timer so this limit instruction will execute will energize this bit whenever the time is between zero and five seconds the next one between five and ten seconds and so on and so forth so you have 10 and 15 and then 15 and 20 so very simple example but it illustrates a very uh, critical principles that you can use within your logic so I very often use these limiting instructions to uh, for example set up messages between different PLCs so if you have uh, an older slick 505 PLC and you have a newer uh, compact logics or even a control logics PLC then you can start messaging and retrieving certain information from that old PLC and you 
usually that messaging instruction is on a timer based period. So it's essentially a very repeatable process and that would execute within a certain window of a timer. And so just to summarize, limit instructions are extremely useful. They are testing on a single integer or float against two different limits. If the said limits are respective of their labels, which is the lower limit is actually less than the high limit, then the test variable will evaluate to true if that variable is within those two limits. If however, the opposite is true, meaning that the low limit is higher than the high limit, then the opposite will be uh, of course evaluated and if the test variable is within that range then it will evaluate to false so limit instructions are extremely extremely useful they can be used for all sorts of calculations and comparison uh, instructions such as for example your analog sensor uh, sending you a value for a temperature well you can test if that temperature is within a certain limit and of course if it exceeds the higher or the lower limit you can take uh, different action and then go and correct that limit until it reaches within or is within your limit instruction. So a lot of different uses and I use this instruction quite frequently in my own logic. So highly recommend that you become very familiar with this instruction. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.